Okay, uh, good afternoon. It is with regret that I announce the death of a second New Zealand SAS soldier in Afghanistan. I was informed earlier today that a New Zealand Special Air Services soldier had been shot this morning New Zealand time while the SAS were mentoring the Afghan Crisis Response Unit in the Wardak province of Afghanistan near Kabul. The soldier's name has not yet been publicly released, but on behalf of the government I want to offer my sincerest condolences to his family and to the entire Defence Force. He is the second New Zealand SAS soldier to have died while serving in Afghanistan. The SAS is our premier combat unit and its soldiers face very volatile and dangerous conditions in order to help the people of Afghanistan. They carry out their duties to the highest standards. They are brave, resourceful and resilient and they are making a valuable contribution in Afghanistan. So the news that one of our soldiers has fallen is devastating for our SAS, for the New Zealand Defence Force and for all New Zealanders. He paid the highest price for his service to this country and we all mourn his death. His death, however, does not alter our commitment to helping Afghanistan. It continues to be the government's intention to keep the SAS in Afghanistan until March as planned. The New Zealand SAS soldier killed during a raid near Kabul has been named this morning as Lance Corporal Leon Smith. Smith, who's from Wellington, died after he was shot in the head during an operation that targeted a compound of suspected militants. He's the fourth member of the New Zealand military to die in Afghanistan. This is One News with Simon Dallow and Wendy Petrie. Tonight, more details about the New Zealand SAS soldier killed in Afghanistan are revealed as friends and family pay Lance tribute. Corporal Leon Smith was much more than a soldier. He'd worked as a lifeguard and a postie. The martial arts expert was also a much-loved family member. Simon Bradwell spoke to some of those who knew him. Photos of Leon Smith still sit on the fridge at the post office where he worked five years ago. It's a great picture because it shows him just finished his postie duties and loading himself up with his huge, huge pack. Running for hours over Wellington's hills with a 60kg backpack, so he'd passed selection for the SAS. Everybody liked him, and also people had a great respect for him, for his commitment and dedication to what he wanted to do. With an elite appetite to match his ambition. Every morning he would hop over to the supermarket and he would get a chicken, and he would bring it into the tea room and eat the chicken for his breakfast still finding time to be a lifeguard at local swimming pools. He would run all morning and then he would come down the pool and do a, a shift with us and he would come with more energy than most people uh, turn up with every day. Also an expert in Chinese martial arts, quick on his feet in case for a rescue. He would have responded straight away, he was that sort of guy, he was very very quick. Neighbours in the suburb of Johnsonville where Leon Smith grew up, fearing the worst when army officials arrived yesterday. I saw them and I said to my husband, It'll be Leon. He said, how do you know? I said, because that's what they do. Their last conversation with Lance Corporal Smith before he left for Afghanistan, now a sad memory. He said, oh, you know, that's, that's what I chose to do, and that's what I've done. But he said, um, I'll be back by Christmas. We spoke to members of Leon Smith's family at the family home. They didn't want to appear on camera. They told us it was still hard to believe that he was dead. In a statement, the family said Leon Smith was proud to serve in the SAS, and believed in what he was doing. Simon Bradwell, One News. But first, Rebecca Wright has details about the circumstances in which Leon Smith died. Lance Corporal Leon Smith was 33 years old and on his second tour of Afghanistan when he was killed in action by a shot to the head. Fifteen of our SAS were assisting Afghan police to break up a group planning an attack on Kabul. It happened in Wardok province, an area mostly under Taliban control. Lance Corporal Smith was assisting with a cordon. Lance Corporal Smith climbed a ladder to be able to get a view about the placements of the cordon team. At this point he was seen by one of the uh, persons of interest in the compound and engaged by fire. He returned the fire, wounding, sorry, um, hitting uh, the person who fired at him. At this point, another insurgent um, fired at Corporal Smith, uh, causing his fatal injuries. He was evacuated by air and taken to a nearby base, but he died on the operating table. 
He's served in the SAS since 2008 and spent 11 of the past 24 months on operations. He was an advanced medic and the first person to reach Corporal Doug Grant, who died on operation in August. His family are devastated by his death and say Leon was loved by his family. He was also loved by his friends and his comrades. He was a wonderful grandson, son, brother and a friend to many. He was sincere and genuine. Smith grew up in the Wellington suburb of Johnsonville. Seen here as a young man, he went to Onslow College, where he played for the first 15. After school, he joined the Navy, but his friends and family say he was always destined for the SAS. It was really obvious that there was one thing right from, right from the word go. As soon as I met him, I knew that uh, that, was, that was his calling and that's what he would do. They say he died doing what he loved and now he will be brought back home here to the SAS base in Auckland before a family funeral in Wellington. Reporter Rebecca Wright grew up in Wellington with Leon Smith and knows his family. Today she spoke to them. She joins us now live from Parliament. Rebecca, what more can you tell us about Leon? Mike, Leon was a brilliant bloke and an all-round good guy. Anyone who knew him will tell you that he was kind, he was loyal and he was funny. I went around to see his family today. They are all desperately upset. But his brother told me a lovely story about when he and Leon were little. They were given an SAS badge by his grandparents. Uh, on it, it had the motto, Who Dares Wins? And his brother reckons, well, that's where the seed was planted and Leon decided that he wanted to be part of our elite fighting force. Force. His friends and family couldn't be prouder of him, um, and neither could I. He was a very special guy. Rebecca, thank you.